What's going on with y'all fam? Back with another message, back with another video. You already know what to do. Go down below if you haven't subscribed. Press the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you can get notified when I upload. Smash like, share this video, all that good stuff. All my platforms are down below in the description. You can go to my website if you want any shirts, you want my album, all that stuff. Every link for anything that you're looking for outside of this YouTube platform is down below. I thank you guys. Today's message, man. You got to be aware of this spirit that can inhabit those around you when you are on your journey of elevating and letting God prune you, mold you, shape you, and ultimately transform you into somebody new. There's one spirit that you need to be aware of, be mindful of, especially as an empath out here, especially as somebody with gifts, right? People that can feel see hear know what time it is god has opened your eyes he's revealed things to you beware of the spirit that is not teachable a lot of people that you're going to encounter in life are not teachable they're closed-minded combative and argumentative argumentative right a lot of these people are jealous a lot of these people don't want to hear what you have to say Okay, and you can be doing it from a pure place. You can be doing it trying to help them. But like I said, the majority of the time you're casting your pearls before swine. You're wasting your time and you're wasting your energy. And this is just the truth. The one thing I had to learn on my journey that I'm learning every day that I make sure to remind myself is to remain teachable. Okay, not teachable by this world standards, but teachable in a place of letting God Reveal things to you through his word, through prayer, through fasting, through trial and error, and learning how to remain a student at all times. You see, this is the problem with your enemies, man, and those that are around you a lot of the times. They're not teachable, okay? They don't want to hear what you have to say, or they'll listen, but it'll go in one ear and out the other, right? And we were all guilty of this at one point in our life, but you've got to avoid this when you notice it okay you've got to remove yourself from these type of people because ultimately you're gonna end up drained right and i've had to go through a lot of this in my um process with god trying to help others also grow the enemy will send people at you who will want to just be argumentative want to just be combative want to just challenge everything that you have to say make you feel like you don't um have any experience you're not qualified you don't know what you're talking about you know what I'm saying? And the one thing I've had to learn and one thing you need to remind yourself, right? All of us can need to remind ourselves is just to remain teachable. A lot of your enemies are just simply not teachable. They, they have their life, the way that they're living it, and that's fine to each his own, right? But if you're constantly trying to help somebody come out of a um, darkness or you're trying to wake them up yourself, I can tell you firsthand, until they have an encounter with God, until they actually see this stuff for themselves, and they choose to stand for God and choose to stand against their flesh, no matter what it comes with, you're not going to be able to help them. Right. And this is the hard thing we have to accept because we're naturally um, we naturally want to help people and heal people and point people back to God. But at the same time, you can't cast your pearls before swine. OK, a lot of your enemies, a lot of people who are frenemies in disguise, a lot of people who are still um, have the scales over their eyes, they don't. Um, they can't really understand spirituality outside of, you know, what this world pushes, crystals and all this other stuff at times. They're going to be very combative with you when you try to point them in a direction that they're not used to, which is scripture, which is biblical things, right? Biblical laws, um, things that God has shown you firsthand. You know, this is why God will require isolation before your elevation a lot of the times. This is why God may remove some of your closest people to you, right? And it can hurt. It cannot make sense. It could be your family, right? It can be a spouse. It can be your best friend. It can be whoever, um, you know, whoever it is that God sees he needs to get you away from. And there's a reason for this because he knows that he can work on you before, you know, they can, they're in a certain place in life and you're in a certain place in life, right? So you just got to understand and avoid these people at all costs. If you're trying to constantly help somebody and they just don't want to hear it or they want to argue with you, they don't have an open mind about it, 
or they want to make you feel like you're wrong for even speaking like this or they want to um shun you and make you feel less than or um start treating you differently when you try to wake them up to a you know a certain aspect that god may have revealed to you and you're just trying to pour into them and help you help them your enemies a lot of the times they're not going to want to hear it man okay a lot of people have been reprobated a lot of people are consumed by the lust of the flesh a lot of people haven't went through your the same process that you're going through right now or you've already been through a lot of people are spiritually dead a lot of people have the scales over their eyes still and they're very carnal right and i've had to learn this the hard way and i'm just here to plant a seed and remind you you know, if God's asking you to get rid of some friends in your life, um, to get out of certain environments and predicaments or situations, or you're always feeling like you're trying to help somebody and they're not listening, it's not your job at that point, right? You plant seeds where you can, but at the end of the day, you've got to recognize this spirit for what it is. It's a very combative spirit. It's the spirit that is um, used or it's sent to you by the enemy when you are elevating, Right. And a lot of the times it's to cause confusion It's to make you feel like you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. Um, it's a, a lot of the times it's to get you to question what God has revealed to you. Um, it's just to hinder you, drain you, you know, get you um, back into the flesh, ultimately right back into the flesh. And this is one thing that I've had to really take notice of. You know, you can't help everybody. You can't cast your pearls before swine constantly. People are all, everybody's on a different journey and path and, 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 and point and place in their walk in life, right? And as bad as we want to help people and heal people and show people what God has done for us at times and how we want to um, have their eyes be opened up, you know, there's there's a time and a place for everybody and everything when it comes to their encounter with God and um, having a supernatural awakening, right? And then them ultimately choosing because you have a choice. Many are called if you were chosen. I think a lot of people... You know, um, sorry, I had a phone call coming in. A lot of people get called and they hang up. They choose to remain in the flesh. They choose to remain consumed. They choose to um, walk in the ways of this world or false, you know, false things, false gods, idol worship, all this other stuff. And those people are some of the, um, you know, some of the most difficult people to deal with when you chose to answer the call when you chose to be teachable to let god prune you and work on things you're not going to be perfect okay but you are at least receptive and you have accepted that you need christ in your life and you want to change that's the biggest difference okay a lot of these people don't can't even get there they don't want to do no self-reflecting no accountability they don't want to feel guilt they don't want to hear anything besides what they've known their whole life right or what others are doing what's acceptable in society, what's cool, right? What's being pushed, you know, the set apart and the narrow path is, is, is for a reason. It's a narrow path for a reason. You know, many are called, few are chosen. There's not going to be a lot of people that you encounter who are going to want to step into that. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, if you always feel like people aren't listening to you, um, you're trying to help people. Maybe you're trying to um, plant seeds and do, you know, whatever you can do, but you're constantly feeling drained. Um, you may be getting in arguments, combative a lot of the times. You may feel shunned. Um, you might lose friends if you choose not to sin. You know, those are good subtle signs that God's trying to remove these people out of your life. He's trying to get you to a certain place so where he can actually work on you and one-on-one and, and -on -one with you and isolate you and reveal things to you and start to really prune you and, and begin to work on you and reveal things, spiritual stuff, right? Spiritual warfare, the lust of the flesh, things that we all need to... Um, really dive deep into in order to walk you know this walk as best as we can now we should plant seeds that's why i do this channel obviously we want to help people however we can and point them back to christ but at the end of the day if somebody's combative if somebody's constantly draining you if somebody's listening but they're not really there you know what i'm saying got that blank stare and they hear what you're saying and then they just go back to living how they always you know live you know it's time to get away from these people close doors protect your energy protect your peace let Abba work on you at the end of the day. And in due time, everybody has that opportunity. It's just a choice. You see, people think that the chosen were just picked and selected and, and it was just, oh, favored from the very beginning. It wasn't that way. We got called and we just chose. It was a choice to be chosen. Ultimately, he did choose us, but it was our responsibility. We could have we hung the phone up just like everybody else has that opportunity when it's presented. 
you know, and the devil doesn't want you picking up. The devil doesn't want you understanding this knowledge and getting educated. That's why there's a lot of persecution that happens. That's why there's a lot of slander that goes on. That's why you get looked at the way you do in society when you do choose God's ways, God's knowledge, God's wisdom, God's word over your own. You know, the enemy doesn't want you walking like this. He doesn't want you out here knowing the things that um, get revealed to you and accepting them and choosing the narrow path. You know, and like I said, the enemy likes to use a lot of combative spirits, a lot of haughty spirits. OK, especially in spouses and relationships. Um, You know, men and women are both guilty of it. But as a man, you know, I've encountered a lot of haughty, prideful, arrogant. I don't want to hear what you have to say to me type spirits. Right. The know-it-alls, the ones that aren't teachable, the ones that think they already have it all figured out and they don't need to hear anything else. You know, no matter what amount of knowledge we do obtain, no matter what point and place we're at in our walk with God, we should always remain teachable, man. I had to learn that early on. Always remain teachable. Always remain humble and in, in a place of being able to be open and receptive to somebody's, um, you know, life experiences or knowledge that God has revealed to them on something. You know what I mean? And we can all let pride get the best of us, ego, all these things. So we got to keep ourselves in check. But like I said, you're going to come across a lot of people who just operate from that spirit, man. You know, they don't want to hear anything you have to say, especially when it comes to that name, man. The name above all names, if you guys don't know. You mention that name in 2023, it'll reveal a lot to you, Christ, right? You say Christ, you say Jesus, you say Yahweh, whatever you want to, you know, label it as, it will begin to shake the room up, shake up wherever you're at. It's just what it is. It's always been this way. You will be hated for his name's sake. At the end of the day, you continue to remain on a narrow path. You close the doors that need to be closed in your life and you choose. You have a choice. God's not going to force you, right? You got to make the choice necessary. You got to understand what time it is in your life and how vital it is and what, what what kind of a blessing it is to even be called right you see these people around you they don't want you stepping into a higher calling a higher purpose a higher path in life they don't want you they want you to sit where they're where they're at except with the cards that have been given to you in life and, and the cards that have been given to them and that's all there is to it you know and like i said a lot of the times you can be pouring into people and they're not hearing you they, they might act like that. They're not hearing you. They're just there to see you fail. They're waiting to see when you um, if you're going to fail, if you're going to fall off, if you're going to become weak. They're like vultures, man. They sit around you and just try to figure out how they can um, get you back into the flesh. Their spirits operating within them. Ephesians 6, 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So you got to understand and identify this stuff for what it is. And the minute you begin to, begin to notice signs of that combative spirit, that argumentative spirit, that spirit that is not teachable, that spirit that doesn't want to hear what you have to say, that spirit that shuns you when you begin to speak with wisdom and knowledge, trying to understand and pour into somebody and help them, get away from them. Close your doors. Don't be casting your pearls no more. Right? And don't stay around these folks because you'll end up becoming, you are the company you keep. And it's just a fact. I'm telling you. People rub off on us um, very easily as impasse as well. And we are known to pick up um, on energies, right? People's even habits and stuff at times. We can pick up on other people's demons if we're not careful when we're around these folks for too long. You know, that's why, like I said, God requires a lot of isolation for us for a reason. It's for your elevation and it's to teach you and it's to mold you and shape you and groom you and keep you closed off from outside things. You know, that operate through people, especially if it's somebody close to you that you love and it's attached an attachment to your heart. That's the one way the enemy loves to get to you, man, is through something that you love, through a person that you love. Right. To get you to question your reality, to get you to question if you're crazy, if you it, all these other things that you're weird and, and they begin to gaslight you and manipulate you and make you feel like you don't know what you're doing or what you're talking about, because these people are stuck in a certain perception of reality. Right. They're stuck in a certain, um, it's habitual sin, the lust of the flesh. They're consumed in it. They've been reprobated and they're spiritually dead. They haven't had that supernatural encounter that's opened them up to even receive God yet. And in due time, they will. And like I said, everyone has a choice, man. So just be mindful. You know what I'm saying? This is part of what goes on in your everyday life, especially if you have to participate in, in um, socializing a lot of the times with people. Whether it's at work or in your household, whatever the case may be, you're going to notice that combative argument of the spirit, that spirit that makes you feel like, you know, shunned, kind of makes you feel like you're, you're wrong for even existing. 
at times. They'll make you feel this way for the knowledge you've obtained, the wisdom God has given you, the work that God is doing within you. You know, and at the end of the day, all we can do is pray for them and let go, you know, and, and forgive and for, forgive and let go. Right. A lot of people um, will make the chosen ones feel bad if they've made the, the decision to get away from close relatives, spouses, whatever it may be. This is a lot of the time is guilt. Right. They want to guilt trip you. Um, and this is it goes back to narcissistic abuse. It goes back to, you know, them wanting to keep you around just so they can keep you at a certain level in life. You got to understand and see it for what it is. You can forgive people um, and let them go. You don't have to keep them around. You know, you can't save everybody. You can plant seeds wherever it may be. But if ultimately, ultimately, if it begins to affect your walk with Christ, if it, if it begins to take too much of an effect on your walk with Christ and where you're at and your walk, that's when you know, you know, it's time to close doors and get in a secret place with the most high, man. So. I love you guys. Smash the like button. Like I said, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you haven't followed me on all other platforms, I would appreciate it, man. If you can do one thing for me, you know, just go down below and find all the links. Apple Music, Spotify, Instagram, all those all those different platforms, man. Go hit follow on those platforms. Say a prayer for your brothers out here, man. Say a prayer for your sisters and say a prayer for yourself. You already know what it is, man. Until next time, it's your boy, King Justice.